Hi guys, it's is Becky here at Aunt Bex Creations and I'm going to try to do this even though I've got a slight case of vertigo. So if I get wibble wobbly, that's why. I was going to try to use up some papers I already have. I have one of those file folder boxes that's nothing but solid papers and then I have one that's nothing but old, old, you know, print papers. And I have this Apple Red Scrap pad and this is by Provo Craft introduces color wheel paper collection uh, I, I looked and looked to see a date on it but I never did find a date but you know this thing is 1980s probably 90s at the latest so I thought we'd use it up it's basically all I have left in here is the red and white prints and what I really wanted to use for my um, base, and this is going to be my version of a flip book, I wanted to use black because I love black, white, and red color combination. But this is one of those, this paper is from one of those $5 pads that you get at Michael's <clears throat> of the cardstock. And if you can see, it's got kind of a texture to it. And when you score and fold this, this stuff splits. So I would not use this except for matting. I'd use it in matting. I wouldn't use it in cards. I wouldn't use it, you know, for a card base. I wouldn't use it for a, a mini album or anything like that where there's structure involved where folds have to be made. So, and I don't have any 12 by 12 just plain white. I have this cream. So we're going to go with what I have. What so we're going to start with this we'll set these aside and I'm going to keep the black out because we may use it for um, backgrounds uh, mats so we're not going to cut first we're going to score first okay now let's focus on our quarter inch gussets on each page and I'll show you what I mean because you want to end up with a quarter of an inch basically down the middle of this paper you're going to come to five and seven eighths I'll come in a little bit tighter here alright so five and seven eighths okay and you're going to score all the way down the sheet of paper at five and seven eighths Then you're going to pick your paper up and go back out. And you're just going to turn it around. So now you've got the opposite side from where you just scored is up against here. Now, score it five and seven eighths again. Five and seven eighths, Becky, not down there. All right, and that will give you a, the score line at 7 eighths and I don't know if you can see that or not on the screen you see it okay now turn it this way alright so now the lines that you just scored are right here running across the paper now you're gonna have two pages so you have to do there'll be a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch there so you're back spine part of your flip book will have to be a half, have to be a half of an inch so this time you're going to mark at five and three quarters then pick it up and turn it all the way around so now you're on the opposite side from where you just scored and score it again at the five and three quarters and what this will do is it'll give you a half an inch in the middle alright so now I don't know if you can see it but right here there's a half an inch right there and then you can see your quarter of an inch for each page so now what we're going to do is it doesn't matter which which side you do, but what you're going to do is you're going to cut on the line 
to the, the second line of the quarter inch. So you'll cut up here, cut up, and then stop right there. Sorry. Stop there. So I'm going to use my um, rotary cutter just because I want the line to be straight. All right, so if I slide this in here, I'm going to line that line up, the score line. Okay, we're going to line the score line up with the cutting blade. And this, this cutter has a, a thing on it. I'll bring this down here. And you're going to start cutting. hard to see that score line. Man, is it hard to see that score line. And then I'm going to cut all the way up like that. <laughs> Hopefully I got it on it. Yep, did pretty good. So see, now you're only cut down to here. Okay? And that'll be at the second, from that end, it'll be your second line at your quarter inch. And if you don't get it quite cut where you want to, B, and you know you're not quite up to it you can uh, use scissors to do just a little snip all right there we go so we'll put the cutter over here so now you're ending up with like this see and what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this tongue out right at that second second line Okay, so if we actually push it over, all right, then we're going to cut that off, and I just use scissors and snip it off, and these scissors aren't the ones I usually use. I like to use these little ones that are made really for fussy cutting, because you can get right in there better. Okay. And then that, you can save it if you want to use it as a sentiment strip or whatever. But see now, you're going to fold fold on your two lines down. So you're going to fold the first one. And you don't have to crease these. You just want it to be folded. And then you want to get on that other fold. Okay, and so see that gives you the quarter inch gusset on there. Okay, we'll do the same on this side. So, well, that first one's wanting to fold first, so we'll do that one first. And then I'm going to fold this one. Okay, so now you have the two quarter inch gussets. Now you're just going to have your spine here. You might have to fold these back up because to get your spine to fold. Okay. Get your spine to fold this way. Alright, so now here's your two flip-ups. They fold in, and then this closes. And see, so you've got a little book. Half-inch binding, quarter-inch here. And when it opens, these flip up. Okay. Now you can decorate it any way you want to. Um, you can make mats, which I'm thinking I might do mats. But keep in mind, this here is not going to be six inches square, okay? I should have grabbed a ruler so I can show you. You have to measure each section so you know how big you're going. Say, so you measure from 
the spine over. So that's going to be five and three quarters. And when you open this here, all right, so those are both five and three quarters. Okay, five and three quarters and five and three quarters by. See, that's where you get your difference. It's five and three quarters across, but it's going to be five and seven eighths tall. So you're going to have that eighth of an inch difference. It won't be perfectly square. Yeah. So you're going to end up with five and three quarters this way, five and seven eighths that way. So you have to keep that in mind when you're trimming your mats. Okay. Now the other thing I wanted to show you, and I don't have another piece of cream paper. Um, we might have to just use one of these pieces of black and hope we don't totally mess up. But I wanted to show you how I did the little corner tuck spots on lens. What I did is Basically, you start with a four and a half inch square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this hole off from here. Just need to get enough off from here that I've got the hole gone. We'll trim that away. And all these trimmings and bits are, you know, easily saved from mixed media project if you do that. Okay, then this is going to be at four and a half. Okay, make sure we're straight. And then cut this four and a half this way. All right, so there's a four and a half inch square. And there's a four and a half inch square. Okay, so there you got two four and a half inch squares. And what you're going to do, and like I said, I would do this with paper that's not the $5 cheap stuff from Michaels because this stuff cracks. But this is all I have, and I'm kind of stuck here at the house today because my car's in the shop. I have to wait for Scott to go pay for the car, it's repair, get the keys, and we'll go back and get it. All right, what you're going to do is you're going to score a half an inch from two sides. So, like, we'll score a half an inch down. This is hard to do this way. Maybe we'll do it this way, and I'll go at four. Score at four inches. And then just turn it one spot that way and score it at four inches. All right, and we're going to do the other one while we're while we got this out. All right, you want to cut out the little square in the corner, okay? And I'm going to do that kind of at an angle. Actually, I'm just going to go straight across like that. So that takes the square off, plus it takes a little off each side here. So that when, excuse me, when you fold this back, that's going to lay smooth. And you can even trim it a little bit more if you want it so it'll, it'll meet evenly. You just don't want to go beyond that line or it'll show the point on the front. Okay, see, I went a little too far, but that gets it like that. All right, now before you do any gluing or sticking down, we want a triangular pocket. So here's your two folds, okay? The two folds are here. You're gonna take this point and you're gonna just fold it to the point there. And crease and what this does is it gives you a nice tidy finished edge here and what I would do is I've got some of this turbo tacky stuff I'm just going to glue this flap down in there maybe a little bit across this way and then we'll just fold this shut okay
I'm just going to make these and set them aside to dry. So I'll make the other one. Okay. You can trim these corners off too if you want to. Might do that just to reduce bulk. Just trim the corner off like that. Okay. So there you go. So once this dries and we've gotten to the net, that point, we'll apply this to one of our um, sheets we're going to put down matted pieces and that'll create a little pocket right here so let me go ahead we'll set those aside let me go ahead and do this one I'll go ahead and cut these while I'm at it these are the corners uh, here's your creases and I just trimmed those away all right we'll fold that up And this paper doesn't like to be open and closed a lot, and that's when the cracking happens. But since these will be kind of stable in position, uh, little tucky spots, I'm hoping it won't crack. It's just this stuff is not really made to, to fold and undo like a mini album or whatever. I would suggest not using it for that. You can ask me how I know because I tried to do a mini album and I ended up having to use lace and stuff to like hold the thing together. All right, so there we've made two tuck spots and if you make them ahead, then this glue here will be totally dry by the time you get to the next. To, you know, by the time you get to it to actually put it together. Get me a baby wipe out to get this glue off my finger because for some reason things like that are irritating me today. Just the feel of glue on my fingers is irritating me. I don't know. This vertigo is something else. All right. So there's those set aside. And I don't think we're going to need this anymore. So we'll, we'll get it out of our way. All right. Now... Do we want to do black mats on everything to start? That might look kind of cool to have a black mat on the cream. And if I did it all the way to the edges, then we wouldn't see this cream when we got done. I might do that. Or we wouldn't see much of the cream. It would just kind of peek out. I gotta take my sweater off. I'm starting to burn up again. All right, so we said five and three quarters by five and seven eighths. Got this piece here. Let's trim this little bit off. It's got a little damaged section. I'll show you how to do one page of it. Um, with just matting and then I'll show you how to do one page with one of the pockets. And then basically the rest of it's just a repeat of the same thing, you know. So I did that one at what? <laughs> Is that at the five and seven eighths? No, that was at the, no, nope, that's, all right. That was the five and seven eighths. So now we need to do, or was it? Shoot, I don't know. All right, this way needs to be five and seven eighths. I almost messed up. Five and seven eighths. Five and seven eighths. Okay. Now, the problem we're going to have is this isn't solid core, it's white, it's got white in the middle. So what we need to do is take some ink and ink these edges real quick. We'll do that real quick. open this pigment ink that I bought a while ago because it'll be nice and juicy and just doing this hides that white core
All right, so that one's all been edged. And these are just cheap old dollar um, Dollar Tree makeup sponges is what I use to apply my ink like this. All right, so that's got the ink on both of those. Now, I'm going to let them dry a minute and we'll decide which paper we might like to use for the cover because the the front the front here is your cover of course Durr. and um <laughs> let's see i'm thinking i want it to be something with more red there's a solid red and then there's that one i kind of like this chat all right, so this is going to be matted onto the black piece that we just did at the five and three quarters by five and seven eighths. So we want to come down um, either an eighth or a quarter of an inch. Let's see if we come down an eighth. So that'd be five and three quarters, and then. Five eighths. Let's just see how that looks because we can always trim a little bit more. I don't know. I think I might actually like a little bit more showing. So if we trim this down to a full quarter inch shorter this way, okay. Actually, that way would be right. We'd only have to trim this one. Is that right? Let's see. Let's see if I got it going the right direction. Or is it this way? Or is it this way? I think I still need to trim something. All right. That's five and three quarters. That's five and seven eighths. So this is the up and down orientation, just like that. So seven eighths minus a quarter would be five eighths, which I thought I cut one of these at five eighths. Oh, I don't know. Probably getting y'all confused too. All right, so five and seven eighths should be cut down to five and five eighths. It's good I have another sheet of this. And then five and three quarters would be five and a half. So this should go on this. Yes, there we go. So this should be five and three quarters one way and five and a half the other way. No, five and, that's where I did wrong. There we go. So this one's ready for this other piece or another piece because I'm going to put something else on so I can show you the other. All right, let's work on the front piece again. So... This should fit the front of this. Let's find, make sure we're on the front perfectly. There we go. And then because this has an edge too, to tie it in with the black, I'm going to go ahead and edge this. All the way around again.
Okay. Always put the lid back on so your ink doesn't dry out. There we go. Now, the other way. This way. All right. So I'm going to get some tape. Tape this up. These flip books. Oh no, I got it on my table cloth. What's well, bad? It's, it's probably going to stain. Oh well. That'll teach me. One day I'll have my cr a craft room again where I can make messes and it won't matter because it'll just be in the craft room. And I was watching someone make cards today. I can't remember who it was. But she, sh she showed the neatest trick. And she didn't even know she was showing the trick. Get your tape up part way and fold it. And leave it like that. And then do it on this one too. And just fold it back where you can grab it. And then come over to this corner and do the same thing. It was somebody making a card. Oh, I wish I could remember who it was. If you're watching, say it was me, okay? <laughs> so here's the base. You're probably not going to be able to see it now. And see the tags hanging out? This is the coolest thing. I wish I'd thought of it. I think I got it the wrong way. Do I? No, I had it right the first time. There we go. Now you can center it up and get it nice and square. Uh-oh. See, you can pull it loose still. Okay, then you're holding these two corners. You just pull the tape loose. And I was like, duh. Here I've been struggling and fussing about how to get it even and everything. That is the best I've ever done on something like this. That is wild. Look at that. I am so glad I saw her do that. Now y'all have to do that too. All right, now let's put this on here. I saw her do that and I was like, oh, I am so sharing that with everybody else as I know we all struggle with trying to get that straight and not get it stuck down because once this, once this tape sticks down, it's pretty much a done deal, people. I get this stuff from um, Scrapbook Pal. All right, I'm going to do that again. I'm going to, if I can, peel it back, put a little fold in it. Peel it back, put a little fold in it. Then that way you're only dealing with the adhesive on two corners, not all of it. Isn't that cool? I'm going to do that again and fold that back. And the lady that's been doing it and I saw do it today is probably going, I thought everybody knew how to do that. <laughs> all right, now to get this on, I'm going to open this all up back up to a 12 foot size. And just remember, this is my front. This okay, the camera cut off. Not sure why. Hope you didn't miss much. All right, I got my flaps out here. Let's see if we can get this on. And this will fit this perfect. As long as I have it going in the right direction. So line it up with your um, the edges and everything here. And then push it into place there and there. And then just pull the tabs. One, two, three, four. And oh my goodness. I wish I'd known that a long time ago. Look at that. Very little overhang. There is a little bit, but it's not enough for me to worry about. 
Oh my goodness, I am so tickled with that. Anyway, I'm done being tickled. Okay, so now I want to do the page. I'm going to snitch this page back, just the background piece. Now I put the pockets all the way to the inside. Okay, so goes goes that way. All right. So we need a mat. I need to mat it first. So we need to choose a paper for the inside. I hope y'all didn't miss a lot. Let's use let's use a white a piece with white. All right. So now we're going to be I'm making a mess. It's okay. All right. So got to keep in mind which way this goes because these are supposed to run up and down. So the cut this way is the five and three quarters. So then we need to take a quarter inch off from that. So we'll cut this at five and a half. All right. And then the other way is five and seven eighths. So we need to cut this mat at five and five eighths. Okay, so that'll go there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut another one for the other side. Since I got the paper here, and this will go over here, and I'll have to cut another mat. All right, we'll go ahead and edge this up with the black. And I'm like, I know y'all are like, why is she using black? Because I wanna tie that black that I'm using in the background to this paper. I just like the way it looks when it's got a finish on it. It's like this paper melts into that paper, okay? So I need to put the tape on. I'm sorry, this is just tickles me to death that I saw this trick this morning and I was like, oh, I should have known that. Push those all down nice and even. My hands are just getting disgusting. So do that one. Push that one up. I'll go ahead and wipe my fingers a little bit. So I'm not getting it all over. White. And yes, I'm leaning way across the table and I probably shouldn't be. All right, so now we know this goes on here. And get that corner stuck down and that corner stuck down and then we can just pull our tabs out. Ah. Not sure that one all the way pulled out, and I think I got it crooked as all get out. I did. I can't see on the back of this, and I know I'm not going to get this back up. All right, we're not going to worry about it. <laughs> it's driving me crazy, but I'm not going to worry about it. All right, now before you stick this down, we want to put the pocket on, okay? Like this. And what you're going to do... You're going to put adhesive on the, this side. And you don't have to put a lot because you're going to, in turn, you're going to, after you put this on there, you're going to t put tape all over the back. I want to get these started a little bit. So the tails are there so I can just pull them off. And I want those to go that way. It's really driving me crazy. I got that crooked, but I'll fix that with some decorations or something. All right. So this is here. All right. You're going to fold these over. And you come back here and pull this off the rest of the way. Pull this one off that way. 
All right, now your tuck spot is held in place, and now you're going to adhere the whole thing down there. So come all the way to the edge, all the way up. The rest of these I'll do with something lighter underneath, like newspaper or something, where I can see the edge of that better. Ah, I tore it all the way off. Ninkin poop. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's all right. It's only one side. I didn't pull them all loose. It's all right. No worries. We'll make this work. Okay. You want that pocket. I'll pull that one up there. This one down there. That one down there. And stick it down. Okay. Okay. So what you do is you're going to repeat this mat for this side, but put the pocket on this corner. And then the mats here and here and here and here and on the back are all going to be exactly as I made this piece. And then we'll come back when I get to that point. Okay. Hey guys, I just realized that I forgot to show you something. I went ahead and I've got my mats and everything cut for the pages, but I forgot to show you how to do the mat for this triangle. So what you're going to need is a four inch square of patterned paper. Any patterned paper from your papers that you've chosen. And you only need one four inch square for both pockets. Okay, so I have a four inch square here. Now let me show you what I'm going to do. Um, actually, it needs to be smaller than that because it's a four inch square that you fold in. Um, so if we come down a quarter of an inch, make it a three and three quarter by three and three quarter inch square. Okay. Then what you're going to do is you're going to line your, your square up on your cutter and put one point in the center of that cutting slot and the other point in there and then lay your cutting bar down and slice away and then you end up with two mats that will fit your corner like that okay and then you'd edge this with the black and, and put it down and that way you have a mat for each corner alright I'll be back I'm gonna sit down for a while and ink and stick and we'll be right back hey guys um I've got busy and, and lost track of time and forgot to turn the camera back on so I'm just gonna show what I've got so far uh, made some banners and cut some squares and then I used this corner rounder like this and it cuts a little space like that and you open it up and I've got a couple photo places there and there this I've, I've made this flip book to be more like a travel journal maybe where you could put little photos in it and things like that and and then there's a couple more spots for photos some big mats up there and of course the pockets where you could tuck stuff if you wanted to. Um, I'm not sure but I might do some faux stitching along the tops of these. I don't know. I'm trying to decide. So that's those and that's both pockets done up with mats. And that's just how I make a flip book. In case anybody else wants to make one, just start at the beginning and then decorate it up. I did put some little strips on here and on the binding and then in the middle. And that ink pad, I had a lot of problems with little 
dots of ink going everywhere so that's why you see some smeared ink on it but most of these sections would be covered up with a photo anyway so that's that's what I did today um, I hope somebody else would want to make one like this um, you can if you wanted to you could make envelopes and attach you know little envelopes or do some flip uh, waterfall type, waterfall type things down the pages or you could do the little envelopes with, that are like a pocket and just slide tags in them that way um, I actually might add a little pocket or something to this page that goes in sideways and has a tag sticking out that undo it on both sides but I, if I do that I'll just do it as a share later on so I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I do these flip books that are have got some dimension and room for a little bit of expansion I didn't do the ribbon I forgot the ribbon again um, normally if I'm going to attach ribbon I would do it under the the mats just go ahead and put the ribbon around all the way and then just have the tails out to the side and that way you could tie it closed in case you get it too you know full and bulky so thanks for watching guys like subscribe leave a comment bye bye